Welcome back. Um, in the last video, we talked about reactions that alcohols undergo, and we saw how alcohols would react with sodium metal to give um, hydrogen gas, and then we said that the alkoxide formed could be converted into a xanthate or into an ether. That was um, the Williamson synthesis, we called it. And then we saw the oxidation of alcohols and um, the different conditions under which we get the different products. Then finally, in that same video, we talked about the formation of esters from alcohols. We said that esters could be formed when alcohols react with alkanoic acids as well as when they react with alkanoic acid derivatives. We said that the term esterification refers to the formation of esters only when alcohols react with alkanoic acids, but that when alcohols react with alkanoic acid derivatives, yes, you get esters, but the reaction would not be called esterification. In this video, we'll be talking about the reaction between alcohols and halides of phosphorus, precisely PCl3, PCl5, and then SOCl2, also called thionyl chloride. Then beyond that, we'll talk about reaction between alcohols and hydrogen halides, HX. Now, starting with the reaction between alcohols and PCL3, PCL5, it is one of the ways of converting alcohols into alkyl halides. As a matter of fact, this is the preferred method of converting alcohols into alkyl halides. The general form of that reaction can be written as ROH plus PCL5, PCL3, SOCl2, any of them can be a source of the chloride ion. So that when the chloride ion reacts with this, what we get on this side is RCl plus OH minus. So this kind of reaction can be called a substitution reaction. Substitution in the sense that OH has left the alcohol and has been replaced by chloride. Now, if I were to write the equation of reaction using PCL3, that would be ROH plus PCL3 to give RCL. So that should be 3 moles of this. So that gives us 3 RCL. So that eventually I have H3PO3 as my other product. So look at this reaction. An alcohol has reacted with PCL3 to give us an alkyl halide and H3PO3 as... Um, side product. So under exam conditions, assuming I was given in question 15, C2H5OH being my alcohol plus PCL3 and I'm expected to create a product. It's simple. This is my R. So on that side you see R becomes RCL or ROH becomes RCL. So C2H5OH becomes C2H5Cl. This remains my second product. And to balance this, I just need to give those two three as coefficients. So alkyl halides can be produced from alcohols by reacting them with PCO3. But in the absence of PCO3, we could also use PCO5. So starting with ethanol, with PCO5 now, <coughs> I'll get as product C2H5Cl. In this case, I have just one ratio one, one mole to one mole, not three ratio one anymore. And then my other products from this reaction will be HCl and then POCl3. So that's the balanced equation for the conversion of an alcohol into an alkyl halide using PCl5. So these are reactions with um, halides of phosphorus. But then it's possible to use SOCl2, in which case you have this reaction, SOCl2 plus, okay, we have our arrow there. In this case, C2H5OH plus SOCl2 will give us C2H5Cl plus SO2 plus ACl. So this is the balanced equation. We get the alkyl halide, we get SO2 and we get ACl. Now for this last reaction, if I were to write the general form, the general representation, of course, this is R, so ROH plus SOCl2. And just as this is R here, to be R there, so I have RCl plus those two. So this is the general form, and that's specific with ethanol. Now, interestingly, we have this. 
one, two, three ways of converting ROH into RX or RCL. But commonly, you are asked in the exam, which of these three reagents is the best for converting ROH alcohol into RX alkyl halide and why? Which one is the best and why? If you were confronted with that in an exam, you say that this last one is the best. And the reason would be that in this last reaction, apart from the alkyl halide, which is the product of interest, the other two products are gases. And because they are gases, you would not need any special separation technique to get your pure product. In that the other side products, being gases, will leave the reaction vessel on their own. But in these other cases we saw earlier with PCL3 and with um, PCL5, you need a separation technique to get your product away from the side product. So that's the advantage that this other reaction has over the previous. So alkyl halides can be produced from alkanols by reacting them with halides of phosphorus as well as thionyl chloride. But another way of converting alkanols into alkyl halides is to react the alkanol with hydrogen halides, HX. Now, HX being hydrogen halide can mean HCl, can mean HBr, can mean HI. These are the three common hydrogen halides that are used to react with alcohols in order to convert them into alkyl halides. Now, in the case of those three, or in the case of um, hydrohalogenation of um, alkyl halides, in order, to, sorry, alkanols, please, to convert them into alkyl halides, there are many things you need to hear, many peculiarities that this reaction has. So let me write the general form of the reaction first. So we have ROH plus HX, which is the alkyl halide, to give rx plus h2o now this is the overall form of the reaction so when an alkanol is reacted with a hydrogen halide we get an alkyl halide and water now what kind of reaction occurs here the answer is substitution so it's a substitution reaction and just in case you are asked about mechanism this reaction can proceed by sn1 as well as by SN2. SN1 means substitution, nucleophilic, monomolecular or unimolecular. So the molecularity of this reaction is one. Then this other one is substitution, nucleophilic, bimolecular. Bimolecular there tells you that the molecularity is two. I won't say the molecularity is two. It means that in the transition state formed, there are two compounds in one. You will learn about that much later. Maybe in um, Chem 211 for those that are in the Uniben environment. Otherwise, in some other courses in other schools, you learn about reaction mechanisms, E1, E2, SN1, SN2, and so on. But for now, if you were asked in an exam, what's the mechanism of this reaction? Actually, it can be SN1, it can be SN2, but it tends more towards SN1 in many cases. Going back to the reaction and leaving mechanism out of it, we've seen the general form. Now, do all alcohols undergo this reaction equally or are there some alcohols that are better candidates for this reaction than the others? The answer is simple. Tertiary alcohols are the best in this regard. Tertiary alcohols understand, they undergo this reaction better than secondary and then secondary undergo it better than primary. So the primary alcohols are the worst in this regard when it comes to this reaction. Then, for the hydrogen halides, hydrogen iodide is most reactive towards alcohols, followed by hydrogen bromide, and then the least reactive is hydrogen chloride, which means the worst form of this reaction that you can have is where your alcohol is primary and your, alcohol, your hydrogen halide rather is HCl. That reaction is so bad that even in the presence of a catalyst, it may never occur, it may not occur. 
all right so the best you can have is tertiary with hi it will occur very readily tertiary with acl secondary with acl primary with acl this will hardly occur and if these two were to occur tertiary or secondary with acl they would usually require a catalyst so assuming i'm coming here to write tertiary alcohol plus hi will give me tertiary rx tertiary alcohol halide just the oh leaves and then what happens x comes in and then the other product will be h2o but this reaction like i said will not require a catalyst it will occur smoothly but what if we had tertiary alcohol this time reacting with hcl then that reaction would require first hcl that is concentrated and then second a catalyst of zinc chloride so this one requires zinc chloride as catalyst and this combination of zinc chloride and concentrated hcl is referred to as lucas reagent so lucas reagent is a solution of zinc chloride in concentrated hcl so soon i'll tell you about the lucas test for distinguishing between primary secondary and tertiary alkanols but for now when alcohols react with hx what you get is alkyl halide plus water now let's focus on hcl for this reaction which means in a sense we want to look at how alcohols all three classes of alkanols react with lucas reagent so bringing lucas reagent on board now i'm going to write tertiary plus lucas secondary plus lucas and then primary plus lucas so that we can compare the outcomes now if you have a tertiary alcohol let's say tertiary roh and it were to react with acl concentrated in the presence of zinc chloride what you get is a tertiary rcl so that's not just an alkyl halide but what an alkyl chloride plus our other product h2o this reaction you are looking at now occurs very readily the reaction occurs very quickly so that the alkyl halide is formed instantly and this alkyl halide being formed will manifest in the form of cloudiness so we say when tertiary alcohols meet lucas reagent they give us instant cloudiness but what about secondary alcohols well when secondary alcohols meet hcl concentrated in the presence of zinc chloride which is lucas reagent still we will get a secondary alkyl halide so secondary alkyl chlorides precisely plus h2o this will also manifest as cloudiness however this cloudiness does not appear instantly it will appear after about five minutes so it takes around five minutes for this cloudiness to appear unlike the cloudiness that we see with tertiary alkanols that is instant cloudiness then in the place of or in the case of um, primary primary alcohols when the primary alcohol is reacted with hydrochloric acid in the presence of zinc chloride that's lucas reagent now you expect that you get rcl that is primary plus h2o but first this does not occur with all primary alcohols i mean it rarely occurs so what you see in most texts what most authorities quote this to be as is that for primary alcohols they do not react that's what you see they do not react with lucas reagent in other words you do not expect to see any cloudiness so in summary how do alcohols react with lucas reagents Tertiary alcohols give instant cloudiness with Lucas reagent. Secondary alcohols give cloudiness after about five minutes. Then primary alcohols do not give cloudiness at all. 
Now, apart from how this reaction goes as per what we see, cloudiness and how long it takes and all of that, if I were to draw an alcohol, let's say we draw this alcohol, this alcohol can be called um, 2 methyl propan 2 ol This is 2-methyl propan 2 ol and it's tertiary. Now, if this tertiary alcohol were to react with HCl in the presence of zinc chloride, what happens in real life is not just Cl replacing OH. Apart from the fact that OH is knocked off and Cl is introduced, first, it is possible that the Cl, in fact, it's very likely that the Cl will not be attached to this. You know, at this point, we have hydrogen. There's hydrogen here, there's hydrogen there. There could be a rearrangement such that Cl comes in, supposedly into this position, but the Cl may end up there while that H ends up here. So that you have something like this, H, C, H, H, C, no Cl in the middle as expected. Instead, you have H, and then on that side, you have Cl, H, H, and then down here, you have CH3. This is a rearrangement. But whatever rearrangement is occurring with a tertiary alcohol is very quick. It occurs very quickly. You can see your cloudiness instantly. But with secondary alcohols, this rearrangement, what we call a shift, could take some time. And that accounts for your five minutes. So we say the shift is a slow process and it takes some time to manifest so that you don't see your cloudiness instantly. Also, in some cases, it's not just a matter of the Cl entering another carbon by way of rearrangement. There could even be rearrangement of the carbon skeleton. Like in this case, you have four carbons, three on a straight line, one as a branch. It is very possible that this reaction gives you a product like this. One, two, three, four. Then you have Cl, you have H, 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 H. H, H, and H. So look at this. In this case, it's not just about the CL having entered the um, wrong carbon, wrong in quotes, but there could also be a rearrangement of the carbon skeleton. It happens. So rearrangements are allowed in this reaction between alcohols and Lucas reagent. Now, having talked about how alcohols can be converted into alkyl halides using halides of phosphorus or thionyl chloride, as well as using hydrogen halides, we'll go on a break and when we return, we'll look at a very important reaction that some alcohols undergo. It is called the iodoform reaction, or more generally, the haloform reaction. We'll see what haloform is, we'll see what the haloform reaction is, and then we'll talk specifically about the iodoform reaction, which is most popular of all the haloform reactions. We'll see how it applies to alcohols, even though it's mainly a reaction of carbonyl compounds. So I'll see you in that next video. Remember to hit the subscribe button so that you continue to get notifications each time a video is uploaded.